Welcome back you guys. Another video today we're talking about why does the Fenestron tail rotor suck? Well, I don't actually think it sucks, but I do want to explain what I mean by that. There's a reason behind it, and Fenestrons as a whole, they actually get a really bad reputation, and sometimes it's, it's warranted, sometimes it's not. So I want to explain to you how does the Fenestron tail rotor work, how does it differ from a conventional tail rotor, and, uh, and why the issue uh, exists, and if we can fix it. So. The reputation, the bad reputation that the Fenestron has is that people say it doesn't have enough authority, which means um, w what they're really trying to say is that there's uh, helicopters that have a Fenestron tail rotor and they have had instances, lots of them, where the helicopter went into a spin, it's called LTE, loss of tail rotor effectiveness, and they weren't able to stop that spin and then they ended up in a crash. Now, well, let's, let's talk about why would that happen. There's a few things that we really need to understand fundamentally about Fenestrons um, as to why that would happen. So, first thing that we need to understand is with a Fenestron tail rotor, something like this, okay, not a conventional two-bladed or whatever tail rotor, it's a non-linearized input. So that means when you input your pedal input, so now we, we're having torque applying to the helicopter in a European uh, aircraft, it's going to start yawing to the left, so you're going to have to start applying uh, right pedal. When you apply that pedal, it's non-linear, so when you uh, are putting pedal, 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 you're not getting the same amount of authority out of that Fenestron tail rotor as you would with a conventional tail rotor. So if you were in, let's say, I don't know, a Robinson or a Bell or something like that, a Jet Ranger or whatever, you put in a, a pedal input and it's linearized, meaning the exact same pedal input that you're putting in, you're getting the same amount of authority out of that tail rotor. That's really important to understand that differentiation. So when we're flying with a Fenestron, typically you apply a lot of extra pedal input to get the same amount of authority. So what's going to happen is you're going to come through translation typically uh, from forward flight to the hover. You're going to demand a lot of to uh, pedal input because there's a lot of torque. And so you start feeding the, uh, that pedal input in and it takes a while for you to actually get the reaction that you're looking for. So now you're feeding, 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 putting in quite a bit of pedal and then all of a sudden, okay, now there's the authority that I'm looking for. And because of this delay, this uh, delay in authority, people um, typically say, oh, okay, well, it's not as authoritative of a tail rotor. The other thing that happens a lot of the time um, when you have a Fenestron, I, I shouldn't say a lot of time, there's instances with certain helicopters where there's not enough power in that aircraft. It's a heavy aircraft, it just doesn't have the power that it's required. Maybe you're loaded up to gross weight, you're high altitude, whatever the situation. And so when you're dealing with a situation like that, now when you get that spin happening, so now you're getting that torque effect, you're getting into LTE, your loss of tail rotor effectiveness, and, and that spin is happening, you're applying that right pedal in this instance, or if you're spinning to the right, you're applying left pedal, and you're gonna hit max stop, so you're gonna hit full right pedal, and the, the helicopter is gonna continue rotating. And you're pulling power, but there's not enough power in the engine to actually keep the blades spinning at their full speed, okay? Now, I'm, that's called over pitching, by the way, so the rotor system is gonna start slowing down. Now, when the rotor system slows down, the tail rotor slows down as, as well, they're direct linkages, okay? Now I'm going to pause here for a second and explain something different. The tail rotor, if you're in a conventional tail rotor, it spins six times faster than your main rotor system. Now in a Finistron like this, it spins ten times faster. This is really critical to understand because when the Fenestron is spinning at full speed, it actually has the same amount of authority, approximately, as a conventional tail rotor. At full speed, similar uh, uh, authority. That's really important. However, when you slow down that tail rotor, because it's spinning 10 times faster than that main rotor, you lose the authority on that tail rotor much quicker. So if you've over pitched the helicopter, the rotor system is slowing down, main rotor and tail rotor, now you're running into an issue because the tail rotor on the Fenestron is losing the efficiency much, much quicker than a conventional tail rotor would. That's really critical because now you're getting into the spin, you're running out of pedal, the, the engine's drooping, the rotor's drooping, and now you're losing that authority uh, on the tail rotor, it starts spinning around, you end up in an accident. So people give it this bad reputation, they say, hmm, this is not a good thing, the tail rotor, the Fenestron tail rotor is not as good. That is fundamentally not the case, so if a pilot is quick enough to get that pedal input in, the authority is there. If they have enough power behind the helicopter to keep the rotor spinning at full speed, that authority is there. Those things are, are really critical to understand. 
Okay, so to sum up this final point, if you're a pilot that has been properly trained how to, use, how to fly with a Fenestron and you understand the limitations with it, you're going to have absolutely no problem. So that's, uh, that's the important thing to understand. Fenestrons are inherently um, totally fine. There, there's a lot of safety features that actually uh, benefit, you, benefit you with a Fenestron. It's actually quieter, which is quite nice. Of course, it's much harder to walk into, um, unlike this one right here, which could cut your head off right there, which is not fun at all. Uh, much harder to, uh, to hit your tail rotor on something if it's enclosed. So that's really, really good and important. Something that I found fascinating to learn actually um, when Jason introduced this project about the Hill HX50 to us, um, we were talking about the Fenestron tail rotor. His is not a Fenestron, by the way. Um, we, I have to be very careful about that. His is called a linearized ducted fan. And there's actually a bit of a design change that is very, very clever. So um, the engineering team, they look... So the reason that's so important is because the transition for pilots that haven't been, uh, that aren't familiar with uh, that type of tail rotor are going to be able to transition much, much simpler. So it's a clever design change. It's going to make a big difference for the pilot. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, now you're going to be able to, uh, to have a linearized input on your pedals uh, with that ducted fan. So very cool. Nice work, Jason. That was very clever of you to, to figure that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. I know a lot of people have been asking me um, over the years about Fenestron tail rotors and are they safe, are they not? Is there much, as much efficiency in them? So I wanted to address that uh, with all of you guys here. If you, if you think this was interesting, maybe share it with somebody else uh, who you maybe have come across this conversation with before. Give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't. We're gonna talk to you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.